welcome to our special 40th anniversary celebration of the IIPE. Um, this occasion is many things, but it's first and foremost an opportunity for us to reflect on four decades of peace learning through the Institute. Uh, as uh, most of you will know, uh, in 1982, you know, growing out of concerns primarily arising from the threat of nuclear proliferation, uh, a seminar was initially organized by professors Betty Reardon, Willard Jacobson, and Dudley Sloan uh, in cooperation with the United Ministries uh, in Education with the intention of initiating teacher education for peace. And from that humble seminar uh, beginning, a very significant beginning, uh, a global peace learning community has slowly and steadily emerged through this beautiful incubator that we call the International Institute, the IIPE, from our friends in Spanish, the IPE. So this uh, IIPE has now formally gathered in person uh, 45 times now in 19 different countries, bringing together thousands of formal and non-formal educators, scholars, activists, artists, faith-based workers, policymakers, and anyone else who wears the label of a change agent um, and bringing these people from around the world to engage in cooperative and collaborative learning towards advancing the field of peace education in theory and practice. Um, and today is our opportunity to share, to learn and reflect from these 40 years of experiences from our ever-growing members of this community. So over the next two hours, two and a half hours, we're gonna hear from many of you about how the IIPE experiences impacted your life, professionally, personally, your work, uh, how it has opened up your heart, how it's opened up your mind to take meaningful action for change, uh, how it's challenged your thinking, how it's nurtured your soul. Um, we also hope that you'll show, show, uh, share some stories today, some anecdotes that are um, both serious and maybe even a tad bit scandalous. Um, for instance, and I don't see them here, so um, I won't name them by names, but did you all know that there has been a couple who got engaged during the IIPE? <laughs> and uh, thankfully, I can say that they're still happily married today with a wonderful, growing, beautiful family. Um, of course, to, um, you know, to be a little bit more serious here as a peace learning community, you know, we're always in the process of ongoing learning together. Um, so we hope too to hear reflections on uh, where it is that we need to grow and learn together to address the emerging concerns of the future. Um, and so this, this occasion is also, of course, an opportunity to connect and to reconnect, to celebrate each other um, and to spread a bit of love. Uh, and I'll say it loud and proud, I love you all. This has been my community for the past 22 uh, years and um, I get so much from it. Um, the format today is going to be a rather informal. Uh, again, we're seeking to maximize the, the possibility for the sharing uh, of many voices. So when we begin here in just a minute, we're going to start by hearing from a sampling of invited storytellers, um, two each representing each of our four decades, so eight storytellers to get us started. Uh, each of these community members are going to be speaking for a brief five minutes. And we've asked them to prepare reflections based on the same prompts that we sent to you earlier uh, when you signed up to join today's event. And I'll post those prompts here uh, in the chat in just a minute. Uh, and the, the stories, these initial stories that our friends will be sharing are intended to, to inspire and, and to catalyze everyone's sharing, right? So the cool. opening session is going to be followed yeah, by a breakout session uh, where we can get a bit more intimate and learn from each other's IIPE experiences. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we have many folks here today who are new to the IIPE. Um, and we welcome you to the community and, and we invite you today in particular to be a fly on the wall, to kind of eavesdrop in on these stories as a creative and informal way of learning about the IIP experience, uh, which we hope that you'll join in person in the near future. Um, and just to kind of wrap up what, what the expectations are, we're gonna finish up with a, uh, a breakout. Uh, after the breakouts, uh, we're gonna um, 
uh, do a little bit of a wrap up, uh, kind of growing our web of relationships through sharing some highlights and key themes from our respective decade conversations. And then we'll finish up by sharing some more thoughts and possibilities for connecting together in the near future. And we'll probably slip in a couple of other surprises as well along the way. Um, so I wanna go ahead and get this, uh, get us started here. Um, just get this experience of a thousand stars moving. We're gonna start by hearing some of this catalytic storytelling from our four decades of IP experiences. In our first decade, uh, we have two guests representing 1982 to 1991. And we're gonna hear from Virginia Coagas, an alumni of 1983, 86, 88, 92, 93, 94, 96. 02 and 03, uh, and I think there may be some others that maybe you missed. Uh, and also, also our good friend Kathleen Cannett, an alumni of 82, 85, 88, and the two 1989 IIPE experiences. So I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Virginia to get us started. Virginia Kawagas. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. When I sat down to write my reflections, it was not so easy to share my memories only of the first of four long decades of the IIP journey, since this education, like all fields of transformative education, is a long and winding road of lifelong learning. My inaugural IIP experience was in July 1983, some 40 long years ago, at the Teachers College in New York. The Philippines was then in a state of gathering storm as grassroots movement against the dictatorship of President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. was already growing. Very shortly after my return to the Philippines, Opposition leader Ninoy Aquino was assassinated as he stepped down from his plane from the United States. This became the spark which led to the historic 1986 EDSA People Power Revolution. The theme of the 1983 IIPE conference was Perspectives on Peace, where the ideas of Gene Sharp on strategies of Nonviolent Action and IIP's founder and mentor, Betty Reardon, on disarmament education resonated with my own experience in the struggle for democracy and human rights in the Philippines. I recall the heroic model of Ninoy Aquino, who was inspired by Gandhi to engage in a hunger strike against his unjust detention. An empowering lesson from my IIPE journey is the openness of the IIPE to the views and practices of peace educators from the Global South context. Thus, the 1988 IIPE in Manila, Philippines, provided a creative and participatory space to explore a holistic and multidimensional framework of education which was grounded in the active nonviolent post EDSA Philippine struggles, not only for the ending of armed conflict, but also for overcoming social and economic justice, defending all human rights, fostering intercultural respect and solidarity, living sustainably with care for the earth and cultivating inner peace. In my first decade of IIPE, I also had the opportunity to nurture friendships and learning circles with many thinker practitioners in the peace education move, movement like Betty Reardon, Pat Nishi, Bob Zuber, Leonard Rins, Terry Carson, Janet Carson, Lester Ruiz, uh, Matsui, Kathy Matsui, Tosuehir, among others. While I learned much from them, I would like to believe that the experiences I shared with them as one of the peace educators in a troubled land was also much appreciated. Having met them has also reinforced the meaning to me of a teacher as one who is wise yet humble, firm yet gentle, 
complex yet simple, serious yet playful, authoritative and knowledgeable, but not authoritarian. It was through the IIPEs in particular where I developed my long-standing commitment to Paulo Freire's critique of banking education and to practice theological and critical pedagogical principles. Moving forward to the present, wow, 40 years ago, I deeply feel in my mind, heart and spirit that peace education, which IIPE as well as other circles of transformative educational praxis have catalyzed, remains as relevant and as urgently needed to overcome the realities of our deepening planetary crisis from militarization, the return to cold and warming wars, to global hunger, inequalities and structural violence, human rights violations, gender injustices, and gender-based violence, racism, and the climate crisis. I would like to say that our stories as peace educators have no ending. And while there will be new conflicts in our troubled world, as long as we peace educators are steadfast in our mission and role as dreamers, sowers, teachers, and healers, we must remain hopeful that the succeeding generations of seeds and plants will grow slowly with patience, determination, and hope, and yield more seeds in never-ending cycles toward a culture of peace for humanity and all parts of Mother Earth. I love you all. Thank you, Virginia. And I think it really captures the hope that we have today, the way you frame this idea that our stories uh, as peace educators have no ending. So I would like to invite our second storyteller today uh, from the first decade, Kathleen Cannett. It was 1982. I, at that time, I was the school program director of the Intercommunity Center for Justice and Peace here in New York City. I was learning and I'm still learning what it means to be a peace and justice educator. Betty Reardon, as founder of the Peace Studies Program at Teachers College, invited me to participate in the initial meeting of what was to become this awesome IIPE. I have followed its growth over the 40 years, amazed by what has been done in those 40 years in 45 conferences, world conferences, and in 19 countries. So I'm very grateful to be a part of this. In 1982, back there, many people, and still now, many people in the world were concerned about nuclear proliferation and its threat to humanity and to the world. Children were afraid. Thus, not surprising, the first theme of IIPE was to think about how teachers and educators could approach this problem. I was very happy to be involved at that time because I was developing a high school curriculum and I had already titled it, The Threat of Nuclear War, Why the World Lives in Its Shadows. At that first meeting, I listened to insights presented and began to see how challenging it would be to change the system, which allowed the world to continue to create such terrible weapons. It would take a long time to change that power structure and that reality. Now, while peace research and peace education and peace action over these 40 years has grown, from presenting a few lesson plans or lectures to granting college and university degrees in peace studies, the threat of nuclear catastrophe remains with us. So the struggle continues. So what have I learned and what do I value? 
from my participation in the 40 years with IIPE. Um, I understand that persistence is vital and that it does work, but we go forward slowly. I have found great joy in the relationships that develop. It keeps me going. I have grown an understanding that building and developing community is essential. I have come to believe that storytelling to one another gives new light and hope to continue and to continue. And I have learned that the goal toward peace has to be universal, cross crossing boundaries of state, country, race, religion, culture. And I, IP has done this. I, we, I, we still have to find better ways of listening with respect to the other who is different. And I have come to believe that commitment to nonviolence may be the only way we must learn to respond to the violence that's presented to us. And IIPE has, asked, has helped me to ask the right questions and to focus on structural analysis. And now I look forward to hearing all the other stories that will be told today with gratitude Oh, thank you so much, Kathleen. Um, thank you for reminding us of the ongoing growth and learning that we all still need to pursue. And I love the way that you open it up by reminding us that we're all still learning what it means to be <laughs> peace and justice educators. And thankfully, we get to do it together. So I'd like to introduce our second decade speakers, those representing experiences from 1992 to 2001. And so we're going to hear today from Armin Modi, representing 1992, 93, 96, 2000, 2001, and 2009. And also our good friend Kip Cates, representing 92, 96, 2001, 2003, 2006, and 2012. So I invite you, uh, Armin, to get us going. Hello, friends. It's a great honor and privilege to be asked to reflect on IIP 2000, which was held in Pune, India, with the theme of educating for a culture of peace. <clears throat> uh, IIP 2000, like men, uh, all other IIPs, brought together many human rights uh, and peace activists from around the world. But here, I would like to share the trajectory of, the, of a few of the Indian peace activists who attended IIPE 2000. Notable among them is the environmentalist and eco-feminist Vandana Shiva, who has been called a one woman movement for peace, sustainability, and social justice. Another is Admiral Ramdas, an admiral turned peacenik who subsequently won the Maxese Award in 2004 for his peace efforts in the subcontinent. Tista Setelvad, a renowned social activist and journalist, also attended IIP 2000, and she continues to fight bravely for the victims of the 2002 Gujarat riots in India, despite her sadly having been jailed many times on false charges. <laughs> Uh, to those who attended IIP 2000, I'd like to ask, who among us was not left in awe watching the documentary Father, Son, and Holy War? No wonder, as it was adjudged one of 50 most memorable international documentaries of all time by Docs, Europe's leading documentary film magazine. We were fortunate to have Anand Patwadhan, the documentary filmmaker himself come to screen it. One memory that stands out uh, uh, of IIP 2000 is of a Major General, a Major General D'Souza, who talked at IIP of the work for peace building that the Indian Army does. 
One day during a break, I was surprised to hear him animatedly speaking in Japanese with our Japanese participants. I later learned he had been sent to Tokyo in 1947 as part of the British occupation forces after World War II. I would like to now move on to a personal note and would like to share how Betty and IIP have impacted my life's work. I was introduced to Betty's peace education course in the early 1990s. The course and the many IIPs I later attended impacted me deeply and changed the direction of my teaching. The belief that peace building requires one to take action to redress social injustices inspired me to launch Ashtanokai, a nonprofit that has been working to empower and educate rural women and girls in villages near Pune, India for the last 25 years. It would not be an exaggeration to say that without Betty's mentoring, encouragement and support, and without having attended the IIPEs, I might never have had the courage to launch Ashtanokai. As although I had the passion, I had no background in social work, nor did I have personal funds. And what is more, I'd lived away from India for many decades. Thanks to Betty and other supporters, Ashtanokai finally became a reality in 1998. And today, it is still alive and thriving 25 years after its launch. More than 10,000 rural women have become empowered through finding their voice to fight injustice. They actively participate in their own development, campaigning against social maladies like alcoholism, dowry, and early marriages. Moreover, hundreds of rural girls' lives have also been transformed thanks to innovative strategies which have helped to arrest child marriages and promote their education, like a bicycle bank, life skills education, and scholarships. Rural girls have become empowered through opportunities to pursue higher education and careers in medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, engineering, to achieve their dreams and unlock their potential. Jawaharlal Nehru, India's first prime minister once observed that, I quote, to awaken people, the woman must be awakened. Once she's on the move, the family moves, the village moves, and the nation moves. I have to thank Betty and IIPE for the contribution to Ashtanukai in helping to awaken some of India's rural women and girls towards their own journey of empowerment. Uh, I, and I, I uh, I'm sorry I did not uh, uh, talk a lot about, uh, uh, you know, uh, about many aspects of uh, Betty's uh, teachings, but I just want to say that her gendered focus on uh, peace, uh, peace building has always resonated with me greatly. And thank you so much for uh, giving me a hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Armin, for your courage and ongoing conviction and for reminding us that peace education has this potential to change our life paths and trajectories, not just for you and the women that you serve and support, but also for generals and admirals. Um, and so we can't we can't forget to reach those populations as well. So now I turn the mic over to Kip Cates. Good, thank you. Welcome everybody from Japan, the land of cherry blossoms and the land of the rising sun. Unfortunately, the sun is not rising at the moment because it's almost midnight here. I'm a language teacher and my first IIP was back in 1992. And the timing was actually incredibly good. My colleagues and I in the language teaching field in Japan had just set up a global issues special interest group within the Japan Association of Language Teachers. And we were amateurs. We didn't know what we were doing. We had a vague idea that uh, we could find a way to promote peace and international understanding in a more professional way through language teaching. We decided to co-sponsor the IIPE in Tokyo in uh, 1992 held at the Tokyo YMCA. 
And to suddenly have the world's experts on peace education, people whose books we'd read, whose articles we'd read, arrive in Tokyo to talk to us, language teachers and others, and to give us the uh, wisdom of their experience was really groundbreaking. It really opened up our eyes to this whole new field of peace education, which could help us out as language teachers. And uh, again, to talk to the people, again, Betty, Patricia Mish, Toswi Hin, Rita Wallstrom, Lester, George Kent, Mitsuo Okamoto, so many people was inspiring. The topics wide ranging from disarmament to feminism, North South solidarity, and so on. And that encouraged all of us to say, you know, we should become more professional, more serious in working with language teaching to promote peace. Soon after, we set up our first ever national language teaching conference with a peace theme in Hiroshima in 1995, bringing in lingual packs, UNESCO experts from Europe. In 1996, we had our next uh, Tokyo uh, IIPE, and this was uh, held at ICU, co-sponsored again by our Global Issue SIG of language teachers. And one of the highlights there for me was uh, again meeting uh, Rajmohan Gandhi, grandson of the great Gandhi, and listening to him very carefully talk about the work he'd been doing in building peace in conflict areas, specifically India, Pakistan. And at that time in Japan, we had this terrible relationship between Japan and Korea, and his thoughts and ideas of how to approach building bridges between young people in different countries inspired me to get involved with my work, pen pals between Japanese and Korean students, and eventually uh, other forms. My third uh, IIP was in Lebanon. This is in uh, 2001 in Byblos. One of my students who I taught at uh, a Peace Education Summer Institute in Vermont was Irma Hosen, and she was working at the uh, Lebanese American University. She decided to host the IIPE. And for me, my wife and I had lived two years in Jordan teaching English. It was wonderful to go back to the Middle East to get our Arabic up to scratch and to have a chance to do an IEP in the Middle East with Arab colleagues and international uh, colleagues as well. And it was a shock, you know, in Japan, you're doing peace education, you know, looking back at Hiroshima, World War II. But in Lebanon, having gone through 15 years of civil war, we could see the bullet holes in the building. We drove off to see Baalbek and the Baka Valley and so on. You can see the need for peace education so you know intense, and that inspired all of us to become more serious. So in terms of legacy, what I've taken away from the IIPE, inspiration, energy, and a commitment, I think, because of having attended those three IIP events, Tokyo twice and once in Lebanon, we managed to push harder in our Global Issue SIG to get language teachers across the nation working more uh, professionally to introduce peace themes into their teaching. We brought over other experts to Japan for national tours, peace educators from Russia, from Germany, conflict resolution experts from Australia to spread the word in Japan in between IAPEs. I also set up an AYF, Asian Youth Forum, and have so far brought together 1,200 young people from 30 different Asian countries for a one-week English-only event where we talk about peace themes, global issues, environment, human rights, and so on. And I've also been involved with Peace Boat, working with them to promote uh, peace with their special programs, and have gotten involved since that then with setting up other kinds of special uh, peace-themed organizations in language teaching groups. During one of the IIPs, we sat around and said, you know, IIPE, International Institute of Peace Education, there should be other ways of looking at that. So we did some brainstorming, and I'll read out what we came up with at that time. We thought there should be six other meanings of IIPE. One is IIPE, Intellectual Inquiries into Politics and Economics. Second, IIPE, Inspiring Initiatives to Protect the Environment. Third, IIPE, Incredibly Interesting Personal Experiences, and they were. Fourth, IIPE, Identifying Important Points of Engagement, very important. Fifth, IIPE, intense immersion in passion and emotion. And every IIP was incredibly passionate, incredibly emotional. And finally, the sixth IIPE, implementing ideas for people's empowerment. I'll send this to you now in the chat. So again, my time with IIP was very inspiring. It helped me to work in my uh, projects over the past 35 years 
to promote peace in Japan among language teachers worldwide. And it's a privilege to be here with you now to reflect on where we've been and to think about where we can go forward from now on. Thank you. Kip, I forgot what a master you were with the creative use of acronyms. I'm so happy that you shared that with us today. And uh, really, I'm thankful that you've shared um, the importance of IAPE, inspiring action beyond the, the physical moment of our gathering together and the ways in which that's manifested in your work. So let's move to the next decade um, of 2002 to 2011, uh, where we've had a, a serious influence in, in, in particularly in Latin America. And the two guests that we will have sharing stories are uh, Amada Benavides, uh, an alumni of 2006, 2007, 2010, 2015, and 2022. And our dear friend Sakina Yakubi from Afghanistan, representing 2004, 2006, 2007, 2009, and 2015. So let's first hear from Amada. Thank you very much, Tony. First, I want to express how excited I am to be part of this meeting. It is an honor to have been chosen to represent one of IIP's decades of work, and I am greatly inspired by it. In 1999, we were starting a working group with young students from public and private schools in Bogota. We were invited to participate in the Haga Peer for Peace meeting. To get to the Hague, we had to overcome many obstacles from financial to political. However, we managed to get the participation of 10 people from Colombia, adolescents and teachers. At this event, we had the opportunity to share with great personalities who had been working in the issue of cultural peace building, including Cora and Peter Weiss, David Adam, Adams, Desmond Tutu, Adolfo Pérez Esquivel, and more. This was the pioneering experience that marked our entry into the field of peace education and that later led us to learn about the IIP which we had the opportunity to attend for the first time in Costa Rica 2006. This e event took place at the campus of the University of Peace, which in itself is an emblematic site for reflection, research, and action in the field of peace building. Arriving in Costa Rica and finding a great, a great reception party as the first activity was wonderful. That was the spirit that marked the development of the entire event, camaraderie, the search for a space to strengthen friendship and networking, the horizontal and the intercultural learning. And since then, we too, we have to do a similar event in Colombia. This become a reality in 2010, when we carried out the IIP in Cartagena de Indias, learning to read the world from multiple perspectives, peace education towards diversity and inclusion. About the second question, what has been the most significant learnings from IIP? Participating in more than five IIP meetings has helped us understand the global magnitude of the field of peace education. We have been able to share and learn from colleagues, colleagues around the world, not only from new research and advances in the theoretical field, but from the experiences, practices in the field and with various and diverse communities. One of the most significant connections has been the possibility of developing in Colombia the experience of the STIPE, Community-Based Institute on Peace Education. From 2007 to 2013, we had the opportunity to carry out local CPES experience, which allowed numerous Peace, education, peace educators still located in the most distant regions of Colombia to have the opportunity to live the IIP experience without language barriers and without having to travel to places where they do not have the possibility due to economic limitations. The CIP experience has given us the possibility of provide local support to peace educators in a complementary and articulated work, learn to learn from each other, learn from local and regional best practices, 
support peace education initiatives from schools and grassroots communities in Colombia, increase the possibility of, a, of effective local public policy, uh, create diverse networks of peace educators in Colombia, increase the potential for research and connections with the international community working on peace education, make the global experience, the local experience effective. What experience or learning from IPE have inspired personal and or, prof or professional action? Belonging to the IPE has not only has not only been a very important academic experience, but also a personal one. My great friends, with whom I can express my doubts, concerns, and achievements in the field of peace education, are from IPE. I highlight, among others. Uh, the emblematic figure of Betty Reardon, as well as Alicia Cabezudo, Anita Judkin, Loisos Lucaidis, Magnus Havelsruth, Jan Gerson, Tony Jenkins, Cora Weiss, and many, many more. It has also represented the opportunity to belong to networks through which it has been possible to present and publicize our work in Colombia. Thanks to IPE, we have been able to feel part of a global learning community acting locally. The IPE is an opportunity to build networks and community and disseminate a variety of proposals and initiatives that occur in, at the local, regional, and international levels. That possibility of feeling that is really the local has a great meaning. Uh, what connections and ongoing opportunities for learning have emerged? IIP's commitments to work from the perspective of a Freudian, a Freudian tradition, valuing a reciprocal learning process where there are, there are participatory participants, that is, where everyone's knowledge is valued and promoted, has been the most important hallmark of the IIP experience. We are convinced that in the face of, of a, a scenario of streets of, of war, reduction of individual and collective liberties, presence of new and all forms of violence, the response must be through peace education. We are optimistic that many local and, and national governments are identifying the need for formal education to go beyond filling students with theoretical contents and advancing socio-effective aspects, emotional education, and of course, peace education. From Colombia, this is one of the commitments of the new government, and we are enthusiastic about being able to collaborate in this regard. This regard. The visit of Tony Jenkins last November to work with the Ministry of Education is an example of this and of how the IIP give us collaboration scenarios to advance in the path of peace bill. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Amada. It's been a pleasure to learn and grow with you over these years. Thank you for reminding us of the ways in which um, uh, IP not only impacts us intellectually, um, but also uh, the ways in which this community has uh, nurtured a sense of solidarity and support, which is so, so needed in this world that we live in. Um, and thank you too for, you know, modeling these creative localized approaches and finding ways to create sustainable impacts through ongoing experiences. So now uh, I would like to invite our dear friend, Sakina Yakubi. First of all, it's a great honor to be here. First, it has been a long time it's that I did not have um, come to some of the meeting and I really miss every one of you. And uh, so I am thankful that to see every one of you right now here on the panel. Um, how did we start at um, IIP and how I got become involved in IIP? First of all, I want to tell you that as uh, my dear friend says, we were immature. We did not have any knowledge of uh, peace education or any knowledge of global activity or any knowledge of um, how to get involved with community work in such a way that you will be able to communicate um, smoothly and you get to your objective. So first when I, um, I was trying to search 
to see um, how can I involve my teacher. You know, uh, I have become a teacher. I wasn't a teacher. I was a public health worker when I started Afghan Institute of Learning in Pakistan, Peshawar. So I tend to be a teacher in myself. I educate myself as a teacher. So I created this teacher training um, project and I was trying to train my teacher. By doing that, I was trying to expose my teacher globally to around the world to see how they can get involved and how they can gain knowledge and how they can be more active and uh, encouraged uh, by others. So first, uh, when I brought them to New York and I was lucky enough that um, uh, Columbia University Teacher College invited them to be a part of a peace workshop by Janet and by, I think, by um, Betty Random. Uh, so um, they came and they uh, were there for a week training there. And after that, I get opportunity to meet um, uh, Betty. And since then, I want to just share this with you that uh, how learning about somebody and meeting somebody so powerful, so wise, and so smart, how it's changed your life around. And meeting uh, Betty at that time, for me, it was an eye-opening for me, and she became my role model. Yes, maybe I am not the activist as I should be, which I told uh, Betty many, many times that I could not be as activist as I want to because I am in the uh, in a country living in a conflict zone and I am in an area that if I stop my um, work, uh, if, if I talk and they capture me, so my work will be stopped. So as a result, um, Billy always knew that and always she was my wife also for many, many occasions and also Tony and also Janet. But my involvement is with IIP, traveling to different parts of the world, meeting most of you important, very mm, wonderful, wonderful people and learning from every one of you that we had a workshop. One of the things that I really, I took many, many workshops around the world, but that workshop IIP always was the top of my list. The way that workshop was set up, thanks to Tony and to Janet and to Betty, and the way that every one of you participate, and the way that you were talking just from the local point of view and trying to bring people and get involved with um, a different way to you present and the way that you are all open to everybody, everybody, no matter who they were, you get them opportunity to speak up. Those kind of activity that you did with IIP, it's really, really resonated in my mind forever. And that is every time that I went to those IIP workshop and I came back to Afghanistan and right away I did another workshop exactly as what I did in, with you guys on those different parts of the world. And I, why I am talking about this, I know you want to maybe hear from me different things, but the reason is that also IIP introduced me to the world as a peace worker. And you know that situation in Afghanistan, and always I've traveled around the world and it's exposed me to many, many podiums. I was internationally a speaker and still I am. And I am talking in behalf of the women of Afghanistan, voice of children in Afghanistan, and the conflict situation in Afghanistan, the way that I learned from Betty how to talk, how to be there, and also not be sort of um, threatened my work. And still today, you know, under the three system, I worked underground during the Taliban 20 years ago, and I worked during Karzai, and I worked during any time, and now I am working under the Taliban again. And you know that we have reached millions and millions of people. You know, you all become a huge organization when we start small. And thank again to Barry Rendell, because she has been my hero, she has been my role model, and she has been my great helper. Every time that I was in trouble, I call her, I said, Betty, in Chicago, there is a meeting I cannot attend because there is so-and-so because I could not speak out. And could you, on my behalf, represent something uh, for women and children of Afghanistan and speak out? She was there. For Tony, the same thing. For Janet, for the same thing. So it seems to me that this community that we built together, it's really, it gives you courage, it gives you wisdom, 
it gives you knowledge, it gives you opportunity, and it gives you patient, to be patient. Living in a conflict zone for 40 years, and still right now you know where I live and what we do right now. Right now, our program is running smoothly. We run hospital, we run clinic, we run 360 women learning center. We are running home school right now. Again, we are running a TV station. All of these have been able to do their work just because of peace education. And one of my words around the world is that, please let to be able to integrate into your educational system, peace education. Everybody start screaming about something else. And I learned from IIP that if you integrate into your school curriculum in a very smart and very wise way, your peace education part, you will be able to achieve your issue. Yes, maybe one of or some of you will say, well, Afghanistan is still in a conflict, but really the women and the children of Afghanistan has changed tremendously because if it wasn't for this peace education, if it wasn't for this learning how to work globally and also how to work locally and how to work with gender equality and how to work with politician and how to be able to bend the law sometimes some, somewhere, I will not be able to be there today. And that is turned to every one of you because you all are my teacher. You all give me wisdom. You all give me quality of life that up to now I am day to day appreciate and do that. If it wasn't for you, I would not be here today because uh, it's just hard. It's hard to survive. It's hard to work. It's hard to be able to manage by yourself. Once you have a community like IIP behind you, and you know that you can pick up the phone and call and say, I have problem, baby. Here is my problem. And up to date, she respond to me and she work with me. And that is IIP is all about. There are many, many people places people talk about different organization, about different activity, but the activity that really impact life, the activity that really reach the unreachable, the activity that really give resilience, the activity that really it's encourage people and give them hope, that is activity by IIP. And that is, I hope that continuously IIP forever uh, be there and continue to see new generation learn from this organization. And sure enough, I do constantly work with my program in integrating IIP forever also. So that is, that is my um, presentation today. Uh, I am not a, uh, I, I really have been attended many, many, but I meet many good people and, um, uh, one of those people that is still I am working with is um, Tony and Janet and Betty and um, Tara Hopkin, who is living in Turkey, and Olina Salvaso, that who is living in Ukraine. These are the people that is still I am in contact with them and I am working with them. The rest of the people, unfortunately, it's uh, I am too busy with uh, being online and being on my country involvement so much that um, I, I have not been involved this recently for several, and I am, I, one of my dream was to have host uh, IIP in Afghanistan. And every time that I ask, people did not come for Afghanistan because they were afraid. And so it's uh, uh, still I'm hoping that someday we will go in Afghanistan and really all of us be in Afghanistan and have IIP there in Afghanistan. Thank you, thank you very much, really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to making that dream a reality someday. We're gonna keep working on that. Thank you, Sakina, for being such an inspiring role model for so many of us, teaching us courage, wisdom, patience. Um, and uh, you know, I think one of the things that you shared here that's so important is uh, acknowledging the ways in which facilitating these face-to-face -face encounters with Betty, with other encouraging and inspiring educators can be catalytic. Um, and I just want to acknowledge uh, Jill Strauss's point in the in the chat here that educating can be activism, and you're the perfect model of that. 
So let's move to our, our final decade. Um, so we're gonna move from 2012 to the present and we have two wonderful guests to, to share stories for us. Loizos Lucaidos from Cyprus, an alumni of 2013 and 2019. And Anita Yukon, uh, an alumni of 2006, 7, 9, 10, 12, 13, 19, and 22. Over to you, dear Loizos. Okay, hi, hi hello everybody. Uh, I'm Loizos Lucaidis. Uh, I'm the director of the Association for Historical Dialogue and Research. And I'm actually now in the buffer zone, in the dead zone, as we call it, in the divided capital of Cyprus, Nicosia. Uh, I'm, I'm also honored uh, and it's also a pleasure to see so many teachers of me, uh, so many colleagues, so many people who opened their houses for me uh, to visit, to travel and to discuss issues of peace education. Uh, because at the end of the day, IIP is not only an educational experience, it's also an experience and an opportunity to travel, to meet people and become family with some of them. Uh, I had the honor to participate in IIP uh, 2013 in Puerto Rico. This was a few years after, uh, after finishing my studies at the University for Peace in Costa Rica, where my teachers, Virginia Cavagas and Alicia Cabezudo, were, talk were talking about uh, this IIP experience, this concept of bringing together people from around the world. And to me as a European, in the beginning, it sounded a bit as Eurovision Song Contest. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but for me, it was like ah, an, an experience, uh, an, inter an opportunity to meet people from around the world. It was way more than that, obviously. Um, I went to, uh, to Puerto Rico with very high expectations uh, and actually they were all fulfilled. I met some amazing people uh, like uh, Tony, obviously, and Janet, Betty Riardon, uh, Anita Hutkin, and then I traveled to Colombia and met Amada Benavides, who wasn't able to join us that year in Puerto Rico, but I hunted her down and I went back to Colombia and found her and I, I volunteered for her organization. So one of the great lessons that IIP, IIP provided me was to see peace education in an intersectional, through an intersectional lens in a more comprehensive understanding that didn't only have to do with the resolution of armed conflict because that was a very limited understanding that I had coming from Cyprus, uh, a society where it's still divided into, into parts. So traveling to Latin America gave me this comprehensive understanding and the opportunity to connect issues of uh, social justice, environmental sustainability and gender issues with the concept of peace. That was, that was a huge uh, learning for me that I transferred back home and I integrated into my work with Greek Cypriot and Turkey Cypriot teachers. Um, uh, one of my dreams, let's say, was to bring IIP to Cyprus <laughs> and with the help of Tony, Janet and other amazing colleagues, we managed to actually implement IIP 2019 in a very uh, special location in the buffer zone, in the dead zone in Cyprus. So you can imagine Cyprus is divided uh, between the north and the south, Turkey Cypriots and Greek Cypriots. So there you have the dead zone. So I assure you that that zone became alive for like uh, throughout the duration uh, of IIP. There was singing, there was dancing, there were the smiles of people coming from around the world to experience what I have been describing all these years uh, as uh, the Cyprus problem. Uh, sharing this experience with my friends from around the world and also giving the opportunity to my local uh, colleagues, to the teachers that we have been teaching throughout the years, to be exposed to the lessons of Mexico, uh, uh, Puerto Rico, Colombia, uh, Spain, so many places from around the world. This was a very fulfilling experience. Um, this gave us the opportunity to also uh, implement an amazing project upon the completion of IIP 2019, which was the People of Peace Education website and publication, which is actually this. Uh, this book with the stories of amazing people from around the world that was published in Turkish, Greek, and English. This publication, so a lot of your stories are traveling around schools in Cyprus, across the divide. So people can learn about what is happening in your context. And that is an amazing lesson. This is the opportunity that IIP gave me. Uh, and this is what I'm sharing now with teachers in my context. Um, that's it from me. And thank you again so much.
for this opportunity and these amazing lessons throughout the years. Thank you so much, Lesos. Um, you know, I think uh, you, you remind us of the uh, of the importance um, of being able to facilitate these exchanges of perspectives uh, and how it has impacted not just you, but I think all of us in terms of expanding our thinking of peace education from my own context to building this uh, important intersectional and comprehensive awareness of what peace education is and can be. So our last uh, speaker uh, before we make some transitions today is Anita Yadkid from Puerto Rico. Hola, hello everybody. I am really so happy to see everybody from so many IIPEs in this meeting today. It's it's it really makes me happy, you know, that this is happening. Um, I want to begin by sharing. Right now, I'm putting it in the chat. It's a picture of IIP 2013, which we held at the University of Puerto Rico in San Juan. The image captures a sense of joy and togetherness, which reflects one of IIPE's main contributions, which is sharing and learning together about the possibilities of peace. Certainly a joyful experience of hope. This type of learning happened at IIPE 2013 and has also occurred at other IIPs, which I have had the opportunity to attend, which Tony reminded me earlier that's been eight IIPEs. Beginning with the IIPE 2006 held at the University for Peace in Costa Rica, where I first met Tony, Janet, and of course, Betty Reardon, actually Sakina also, and Amada of, of those who have spoken this morning. But how does this learning together happen? IP is most and foremost a pedagogical encounter. Its methodology provides for genuine participation where each person contributes their proposals and concrete efforts for peace based on their experience experience which is always local, yet speaks to educators from around the world. At the same time, IIPE promotes serious thought about the obstacles for peace and the personal, social, and political action needed to overcome these. This is another main contribution of IIPE, reflection and thought to better understand the complexities of the culture of war and violence. Certainly, deep reflection requires a protected space which guides participants in this process. In this sense, IIP's pedagogy provides for ways of knowing that lead to personal and shared engagement with this problematic and favors understanding that is sentipensante from the head and the heart as we very much learned in the past IIP in Mexico a type of understanding that strengthens our resolve towards action. Having the opportunity to host the IIP 2013 at the University of Puerto Rico provided us at the UNESCO Chair in Education for Peace, a special opportunity of growth and networking with educators from Puerto Rico and different countries in ways that are not common in our colonial mindset and political reality. It also allowed us to appreciate the many ways in which we do contribute to break away from various forms of violence, including militarism, racism, and environmental destruction. So IIPE or IPE is a joyful but serious endeavor that leads to connection with others. This is the best part of IIPE, knowing and connecting with educators from different walks of life in nourishing our work for peace through transformative educational practice. A connection that starts during an IP event and continues for years and decades to come as we see today in this 40th anniversary celebration. So a big hug and big round of applause for everybody that's been part of this effort and is here this morning to share this one more time at IIPE. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding us of how the, con the connections continue to grow. 
um, and through joyfulness, through seriousness, through intellectual engagement, through being there for each other. So uh, I want to make a transition. I want to turn over the next portion of our event today to our dear friend, Mika, uh, Michaela Siga de la Gaza. Mika, uh, turn it over to you. Hello, welcome everyone. It's so inspiring to hear such wonderful stories and I'm very excited for us to get to move to the part of our gathering where we will each get to share and uh, listen in a bit uh, smaller contexts. Um, before we do that though, um, I want to invite us to do, take a bit of a brain break and to um, center a bit. For that, I'll invite um, Gloria Abarca um, to get us a bit activated and focused. Thank you so much, Mika. And um, hello, everybody. And like Anita said, uh, we are going to continue in connection and in senti pensares. That means we are going to make connection between our heart and mind. I'm going to ask you that first, we are going to clean our body like we have a dust. We are going to take out all these things that we don't need. We are going to clean our body, try to take out the things that you don't need now, that uh, your body is here and now. And now we are going to um, review our body, like make a scan. How is our four dimension, body, heart, mind, and life? We are going to take a breath, inhale, exhale. We are going to review how is our body, how is our feet, legs, stomach, chest, back, head. How is our body today? Inhale, exhale. How is our heart? Which feelings we have now? Every feeling is a message for our life and is so welcome. We are going to inhale, exhale. How is our mind, our thoughts, our memories? We are going to say thank you for all these beautiful memories that we have now. Inhale, exhale. And if the life can speak with you, what is the message that you can receive now? Maybe can arrive like a word, maybe can arrive like an image, a sound, a smell. We are going to take a breath, inhale, exhale. Now we are going to Take the last one breath, we are going to inhale, and we are when we are going to take the exhale, we are going to make a sound. Inhale, exhale, <sighs> stress your body. <sighs> and now we are continue with this beautiful moment to continue with the connection. And we are going to listen, Mika, that how we are going to continue making making connections. Thank you so much, Gloria. I know that I wanted to internalize a lot of what I was hearing and I'm appreciating the opportunity to breathe that in. Thank you. Um, let's move into a little bit of logistics um, now that we're activated and focused. So our next portion is focusing on this breakout storytelling, right? So we have four breakout rooms and they are divided into the four decades. Um, so we invite you to enter and also move between the different breakout rooms of the different decades um, to take the opportunity to listen perhaps to uh, participants of a decade that you have not had the opportunity to attend um, or perhaps jump into a room of the decade where perhaps you have attended and you would like to share um, stories spanning, as Tony said, the, the influential, the fun, the serious, um, and everything in between. 
Um, so I, each of these four decade rooms have a host um, who will sort of serve as facilitator to make sure that the circle style storytelling um, is, is flowing and everyone has an opportunity to share. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce them. Um, so the first decade is from the year 1982 to 1991, um, and that will be hosted by To Sui Hin, who is a participant of 1988, 1992, 93, 94, 96, 97, 2002, IIPE 2003, and 2007. Um, and in the second decade, um, which is 1992 to 2001, um, our host will be Asha Hans, um, who attended in 2000, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007. Our third decade, um, the breakout room will be hosted by um, Eva Naj, um, the third decade being 2002 to 2011. Um, and Eva Naj, has uh, participated in the IIPE in 2003, 2004, 2006, 2007, um, 2009 as well. And I think there's one more because I met Eva in 2015, something somewhere. I'm missing a number in there, but that's okay. And um, our fourth decade and our fourth breakout room will be hosted by Tomas Dario, um, who attended in 2019 in Puerto Rico and also hosted in 2022, our most recent IIPE in Mexico. So those are the four breakout rooms that we'll have. Um, the logistics about how to move between the rooms. Um, some of us have updated Zoom capacities and we will be able to move ourselves between the rooms. And so I will give you instructions for if you see at the bottom of your screen, um, a button that says breakout rooms. If you don't see it, you might try hitting the more button and allow that to, um, to then click on breakout rooms. Um, the image or the logo is for smaller windows that make a larger square. Um, when you click on that, it will open a window with the decades listed. Um, and there are blue buttons that will say join. When you click join, it will put you into um, one of those smaller rooms with one of our hosts. Um, the hosts are the only folks that are required to stay in those rooms for the entirety um, of this next section. Um, otherwise, you are again encouraged to, um, to move between rooms as you wish. Um, if you have any issues entering the rooms, um, we have two wonderful folks who are going to be here in, and I'm going to spotlight both Heather and Robbie so that you all can see who will be your troubleshooters. Um, Heather and Robbie will be staying here in the main room. So if you have any issues at all, they'll be here to assist you. Um, and you can either write them in the chat or you will simply see them here. Um, and you can ask them for any help and logistics that you might need as well. Um, the last thing I'll say is that if you are in a room, and you would like to move to another room, um, you may click on the leave button that will be at the bottom of your screen. It's a blue button at the bottom of your screen. Um, you will then see the option to either leave the breakout room, in which case you'll be able to return to picking another room to enter, or you will see a button that says leave meeting. I would caution you not to click leave meeting unless you would like to re uh, enter with the link to come back on the Zoom, uh, on the Zoom call. Um, and with those instructions, I will ask if you have any questions to ask them of me or of Robbie and Heather. Um, and we'll see if we can open the breakout storytelling. <laughs> I want to go ahead and, and turn it over to Janet to facilitate the next uh, portion of our experience today. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, I just want to say that sometimes uh, being a peace educator and thinker and activist, I feel like I'm living on air. But when I'm here with you, I feel my heart 
my heart threads woven with all of you and with all these years and experience that we've had together. And so I, I feel full bodied and I feel empowered and strengthened to go on. And um, my task right now is to, you know, the pedagogy of peace education, if you were going to sum it up very quickly, would be reflective inquiry, dialogical, experiential. So now we're going to reflect on the reflections of our reflective inquiry and build up some more love and life and resilience for our work. And I'd like to invite each of the uh, facilitators of the breakout groups to speak. And let's go in reverse order, starting with the most recent dialogue, uh, the most recent decade, and that would be from you, Tomas. Thank you, Janet. Okay, so I would like to, to thank the people who were in our group. Uh, for sharing their stories. And I would just like to uh, highlight some powerful, um, I would say powerful keynotes that I heard from what was shared. So the first one was the power of the community. People really wanted to be there and it moves our hearts. The other, another part would be surprising and educational. We spoke about methodologies and the sense of community and support. It feels like a family, this learning community. It is inspiring. We love each other um, and we show the love that we have for each other. Uh, we also uh, spoke about visiting new places and getting to know new places. We learn from each other, not just from the speakers. And uh, it was uh, amazing learning through the reflection groups as well. And uh, the what we got from the reflection groups was not only like in that present moment, but also impact in our lives. So this is what came out of our, our group. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. That was beautifully succinct for something. We have so many words we'd like to pour out. You did a, just a beautiful job of hitting the high points of inspiration. Thank you. And next, we have so much overlap of the decades. I believe that um, Anita, is it you? No. Eva. Eva. Oh, my darling. <laughs> my beloved Eva, please, I look forward to your talk. Eva and I in it's Zara. Okay, are, okay, are, are you it's, ready? Are you there? I am ready. I am ready. Beautiful. Beautiful. Ready, dear Janet. So. It was, it was amazing to meet people through these excellent techniques. And unfortunately, I, I, I was not visible, but I was really there. So one I would like to share with you, it was our sharing, our discussion, our memory, common memory, was familiar and professionals in the same time, remembering uh, the mood of the all the meeting or institute that we participated in, and uh, it was really professional. So it's a uh, it's touchy always, always. But it was really hard work how to how to learn how to learn each other. And the other is personal and organizational. So not only personal contacts as a friend or, or, or teachers or activators as professionals, that it's, it was really good to hear about different organization who are active in the peace work. And the third one is the activities and theories and the attitudes. So it was really always active and, and share and can advise and idea how to, we can achieve our goal and, on, and do the work better, learn more about peace education for all of us as teacher and activator. 
and uh, different theories and how the how the theory or or knowledge change during the decades how we can move the for example the basic peace education uh, knowledge or, or theories information and to to different topics so change the topics now it's the environment and the, and the climate change so it's so we share our personal stories it was nice memories to those who we were some iip institute together and for those also who i don't know personally but it was evident we can know each other so thank you so much for invitation for this excellent anniversary thank you eva for the uh, comprehensive overview of the, uh, the the areas of learning that merge and weave together and um uh, she says, may we see each other again once in our lives? I please. hope, I hope. <laughs> and, and let's think of that among all us and how to, how could we make that happen? Okay. We can see, okay. My the darling. Greetings. Yes, and now for- Asha, uh, dear Asha. Uh, yes, Asha, for the decade 92 to 2002. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That was a tough decade, and I think uh, uh, the participants in this group were very clear that what helped them to get through that uh, the the problems of that era was the methodology that they learned, the skills that they acquired. Even for people living in conflict areas, uh, this became so very important, and I think this was one. Uh, thing that um, you know, they came together and they learned together. The other thing was uh, the feminist networks, uh, feminists coming together to form networks like FEDEM. And that was something he was there, so many of us are there who were part of that, to learn together, to hold hands together when there are problems, when there are issues. But so, um, you know, it was something that brought us all uh, on a platform which was so very, very vibrant whenever we could meet. And um, I think I also, there were two other things that struck me. One was the young people who have come in and it's so good to have them, that there is a new generation that has come in. And we ended with uh, Sakina's call and I'm sure that uh, Tony will tell us about it later and what, how and, uh, you know, because this is a platform, we work with each other, we deal with each other, and we respond to each other's needs. And uh, that, that is what uh, this, uh, brought, uh, this uh, our talk uh, from that uh, era brought us, because that is what uh, their collaboration was there, you know, networking was there, talking to each other, and making a platform which is, you know, it, it goes on, it doesn't stop. It's, there are young people coming in. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you, beautiful Asha. It, it, there's a certain resonance in the breakup groups, a vibration of all this past that we bring together so, where we have maybe our own patchwork memory, but we help revive it and, and strengthen it. I, I want to refer to um, Gloria's to Gloria's, uh, 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 you know, uh, heart, mind, body, and uh, that in our group, the heart really pulsed strongly. Next, for the very first decade of IIPE, we invite Tosui Hin. Thank you very much, uh, Janet. Um, our group actually involved uh, participants from, from other decades, not just the first. And I think that's uh, uh, that's the way it should be. It's, I think, uh, people uh, involved in first, second, third, fourth decades move back and forth and we learn from between the generations as well. So we're very 
appreciate it for that. I think a number of um, key issues have been raised already by the previous uh, breakout groups, and so there's some overlap. But certainly, we, as a group, uh, uh, stress the importance of IP stressing process. That is, so on the one hand, the need for critical pedagogy, uh, sometimes in his studies and so on, pedagogy is neglected. So I think that's very crucial. And then in the wider sphere of peace building, uh, the, the crucial uh, process and strategy of active nonviolence uh, is the way to build a peaceful world. Uh, we certainly stress that when we talk about peace, it has to be multidimensional and holistic. And uh, therefore, all the other transformative education movements from human rights education, multicultural education, uh, global justice education, uh, education for sustainable futures, inner peace. I think all these uh, are brought together under the, you know, within the, the community of IPE and we learn from each other. Uh, intersectionality, I think, was a concept raised by one of us, Lester, to point out that uh, we have to talk about all those connections between the different issues and problems of peacelessness and conflict. So, for example, uh, militarism and sexism, uh, militarism and human rights, uh, justice and, and environment destruction and so on. I think IP allows that kind of um, thinking through the root causes of all those themes are, are very interconnected and holistic. I think we also uh, stress the need, and IP does that well, that uh, it's not a formal academic conference or just academics or just formal institutional uh, education, but the links between formal and non-formal and informal educations and educator, all the movements, uh, grassroots movements really play a very important role in helping teachers in the formal system uh, to, to integrate uh, uh, peace education in, in their curriculum and so on. Uh, I think the, the role of um, intergovernmental agency, UNESCO, I think came up in our, our session with Kaisa, working with UNESCO for a long time, and John Min from APSU, the UNESCO Center in Seoul. I think to remind us that um, UN agencies, UNESCO play this leadership role as well in, in, in terms of, um, of uh, promoting peace education, but all the other transformative fields of peace education. Uh, certainly we agree with, um, uh, and things come forth in the other groups that IP is really a community uh, that we develop friendships with each other through IP, and this continues way beyond any IP, and we continue to support in solidarity with each other. And finally, a final point is I think Lester put it nicely, where um, there's this uh, the assumptions of the one and the many, and so it's so important that IP uh, continues to promote the many and not um, uh, become the one, uh, which, uh, so putting everyone else into one, into the one. Therefore, I think IP remains dynamic and holistic, then the many can begin, can continue to, to, to evolve and, and to build this small, this very complex uh, human and also, of course, uh, our bio world to build peace, justice, and sustainability. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for your succinct and unsummarizable <laughs> summary. Very powerful. Thank you, everyone who facilitated. Am I doing the announcing the announcements? Or you're making a small announcement, Mika, before the announcements? Yes, just a small one. Um, I have been taking notes of some of the recurring themes that we have been celebrating um, and highlighting as a part of this anniversary call. And I would simply like to extend the invitation um, to help make visible some of the cross-pollination that we have been undertaking um, together. Um, so I am inviting us to create sort of a communal anniversary gift um, for us and by us. So, and this will come in form of like a word wall. So if there is a word that you feel is reflective of today, the celebration, but also of your connection and time with IIPE across these 40 years, I invite you to type um, this word as a gift, as a reflection into the chat. Um, and I will compile these and we can share this at the end as a bit of closing and commemoration. 
Okay, lovely. Thank you so much. I want to highlight this fragment from the cake to celebrate the 40th anniversary given to us at IIPE Mexico. And with this wave of a fragment, we connect to the founder's message. Thank you all. Um, I'm going to um, speak as best I can for Betty here. She's sent us a message. And since she's not here with us in person, I want to actually share uh, a screen so we can see her and connect with her. Give me one second here to pull this up. Okay, so this is a message and reflection on this special occasion from our dear colleague, Betty Reardon. Um, and by the way, she can't join us today because she tells us she's off on a Caribbean island enjoying spring vacation, and we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> so here is her message to us today. IPE came out of a convergence of three initiatives for peace. First, the intent of United Ministries in Education Ecumenical Educational Group to initiate opportunities for teacher education for peace. Second, the convening of the second special session on disarmament at the United Nations, which brought to New York members of the nascent global peace education movement. And third, a yet to be organized growing movement of educators and activists seeking to make education an instrument of peace. The first IIPE became a seedbed of multiple initiatives to disseminate and develop peace education by a growing network who energized and inspired each other in the development and dissemination process. Today, we have a similar convergence that demands new visions and conceptualizations. I am confident that those associated with the IIPE will find ways to confront the urgency of impending nuclear disaster and the growing authoritarianism that impels the threat of nuclear weapons. May you find ways to assure the required education of teachers and activists towards these ends. Educate the wider public for the abolition of nuclear weapons and grow the network that has made the IIPE a significant instrument of peace. I wish you all well, and I am confident that you will achieve our mutual goals. Love, Betty. I find it hard to speak after that, but that's our job to carry on. And so we are moving forward to the future that we all have together, starting with announcements. Rajib, are you still here to announce the IIPE? Uh, in Nepal. There is no peace without peace education. Hello everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here to see most of our peace education community members in one frame today. What an incredible day. We are now celebrating four decade journey of our peace education community. I really appreciate the hard work, the leadership, the vision, the support, contribution from multiple people to ensure this peace education journey continues. So I hope we can celebrate many, many more decades of peace education community journey. I am here with the exciting news. So with IIP Secretariat and the Nepal team, we are planning to host 2024 IIP in Kathmandu. So I, I am here to not only inform you about IIP 2024. I'd also like you to say the words, also uh, start planning to join our community in 2024 so that we can be here in the foothill of Himalaya, be together, explore and talk, discuss about the very deep diving issues and uh, the matters of the peace education so that we can at least uh, say and make our peace economy more strong bonding and more community feeling together. So hoping to see you all in Kathmandu next year, 2024. Thank you, Rajiv. You are great on tape and in person, and we look forward to seeing you soon again. Next announcement comes from our very own Tony Jenkins <laughs> and his global, the, some of you have been involved with the global campaign since its inception in 1999 at the Hague Appeal for Peace. 
Here's Tony presenting the latest, very significant incarnation. Really, this is uh, something that was mentioned earlier by Loisos. So this is really a, uh, a project of the Institute, the grout of the Institute, uh, but also uh, one that is connected to the campaign. So he mentioned that when we were together in Cyprus, that we launched a new initiative called People of Peace Education. And so really what I want to do today is just extend an invitation to you all to join this, uh, this project that seeks to amplify the stories and voices of peace educators working in different contexts all around the world. Uh, I'll send a follow-up invitation, but um, to, to encourage you all to, to join this project, but essentially what it is is uh, featuring stories and voices and reflections of your work, your successes, your challenges, your triumphs, um, and to help build a better profile of the work that's happening in peace education around the world. And I'll throw a link in the chat here in just a second so you can preview the project. Thank you, Tony. And it's a lot of fun to be a part of this. You get to be in a video. It's all, say your words. It's very cool. Um, I will make Dale Snoward, are you still here? Or Anita Yutkin. She and I are collaborating on um, the Infactus Pox special issue on interweaving intercultural peace learning or more or less that's the title and the date for submissions is april 1st and it will be a bilingual edition as our previous one was uh speaking about it takes off from the theme of iipe mexico 2022 last year 2022 and we invite though a much wider audience to contribute to this scholarly journal. And from your own perspective, we invite you from all over the world to illuminate your work for our network. Thank you. And the last message, an announcement form. Thank you, Anita, for putting in the website uh, where you can submit and find the instructions. Uh, and um, IPRA, the International Peace Research Association, is uh, having a conference in Trinidad this May, May 7th, it starts May 17th for about four days. And IPRA is celebrating its 40th anniversary. And Betty was one of the early founding members. And among the things that she co-founded was the Peace Education Commission, PEC, which is celebrating like IAP, its 20th anniversary. So we invite you to be there and talk about it. And is there anything else I should announce, Tony? Hakeem is here. Uh, maybe we can have him give us an official invitation, Hakeem? Yes, please. Hi, everyone. Greetings, greetings. I'm on sabbatical this year, so I'm currently traveling, and sorry I could not attend this event um, mm -hmm. in whole, but I will be watching the recording, but I think it's being recorded. So thank you, Tony and Janet, for organizing this. Um, of course, peace education is near and dear to my heart. It's what I studied and I try to practice in my life and in my work. Um, the IPRA conference is happening um, in my home country of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, it's five days, May 17th to the 21st. Um, I will write in the chat again, the website. I'm hoping um, several of you will be able to be there. I know Tony is coming, Janet is coming, and a number of you, but this is an official invitation to come to Trinidad. It'll be the first time that April will be in the Caribbean region. Um, and I'll stay on a bit after this talk in case any, anybody has any questions for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janet and Tony for organizing this event and much love to the peace education community. Yes, I wanna add, thank you. I'm so glad you're here to make the announcement so well <laughs> for us. Hakeem, one of the organizers is his home country. And I wanna say this is an important occasion because often IPRA is Asia focused and we've had a lot of South American, North American IIPEs. This is a location sort of mer trying to merge those disparate networks. So please, we encourage you to come. And now for the ritual closing, I turn it over to Mika, correct? Yes. Yes, hello. 
Um, so thank you to all of you who shared words um, with, with us to be able to share back as um, a word cloud. I um, am sharing this with you all in um, the chat and I will share it briefly um, by sharing my screen. Um, simply to point out, I think what perhaps we have already said um, and to just to um, this will need to summarize just one more time of pointing to um, the things that the words that are largest are the words that were repeated the most times. Um, and in green and blue, we're representing our world um, of heart and solidarity and learning and highlighting and celebrating IIPE as well as Betty and the continuing connection for peace and commitment to support and love and inspiration. Um, this will be available um, to everyone as sort of a communal um, gift and a bit of um, closing of this space. So thank you all for being such a incredible formative part of it. Thank you, Mika. It's wonderful. We could use it for our next screen saver or whatever. Thank you. It's so good to have a like a takeaway, even in this virtual setting in the tradition of IIPE. All right. So now I think we turn to Tony. So yeah, so there's two things we want to do as a, a kind of a way of closing. Um, you know, the, it's never a closing. It's always an, an invitation to an opening, right? But we have a lot of people with us today, and we'd love to get a group photograph of our anniversary event. And I've already spilling onto two screens, so that's great. So um, I want to invite everyone to turn their camera on for a second. If you haven't been, uh, we'd love to see your faces as we go out here. Um, and so I'm going to ask your patients to be with us for two things. We're going to take this group photo, and then one of those words that appeared on that word wall was Betty. And there was lots of love given to the founder today. And we actually want to give back a, a special bit of love to her. So I'll instruct you on how we're going to do that in just a second. So is uh, everyone almost ready? A few more cameras to turn <laughs> on. Anto, Collins, I'd love to see. Oh, so good to see you. Monisha, Carlos, Luisa. Let's see those beautiful faces. All right. And one, two, three, and smile. <laughs> Keep the smile going. Okay, and now screen number two. And everyone get ready for the biggest smile you've ever had. One, two, three, one, two, three, and <laughs> smile. Beautiful, okay. Now, <laughs> our final little bit of, uh, of closing is, is we want to give back a message to Betty. And so to, to mirror the words that she shared with us about uh, inviting us to be instruments of peace, um, we thought we would say collectively together, the note I've just typed into the chat, and this will be, uh, we'll record this and send this little video greeting to her. And so what we're all going to say together in unison will be, Betty, thank you for being our instrument of peace in conducting the IIPE orchestra. Okay. So are you all ready? I will do this on the count of three. So turn on your microphones so we can hear all your voices. Everyone together will make a nice, um, hopefully, um, harmony here. And on three, all right, one, <laughs> two, three. Betty, uh, Betty, Betty. 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 Um, I mean, that kind of wraps up the formal part of our program, but let's, uh, we're welcome to hang out for another 10 minutes or so and, and say hello and connect and send love to each other while we're all still here. Um, and hopefully we see you all together in Trinidad and next summer 2024 in Nepal. <laughs>